Welcome to the inaugural moto vlog of Easy Riding. I'm Zach. And I'm Emma. Let's go for a ride. All right, so we're headed today out to pick up some local honey and uh, get us some little lunch on the way. They figured we'd take all of you along with us for the ride. And along the way, I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit about uh, what else but what we're riding today. Before we get too deep on that though, we'll give you a little background on uh, who we are. My name is Zach and uh, I've been riding uh, motorcycles for oh, 12 years now, something like that. I haven't owned too many bikes and I found that I tend towards uh, larger vehicles. And there was a stretch in the middle where I wasn't riding at all. Just after we had kids, uh, motorcycles didn't, didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense, so. I'm Emma, and I've been riding uh, Pillion um, exclusively. For... Which, if you don't know, Pillion is backseat. Yeah. Passenger on a motorcycle. Passenger on a motorcycle or two up. Pillion. I was about 18 and um, I would ride with my adopted dad uh, to various motorcycle rallies and just around town doing whatever. He was a part of Christian Motorcycle Association or CMA so he rode um, with them and I tagged along anytime I could. And then when I got married to Zach, I ride with him now. And like Zach said, we have two kids, two teenagers. And right now it's November and we live in Arizona. So while most of the country's riding season is just getting finished and you all are getting ready to put your bikes away for the winter, we get to really get our riding season started. So I hope you guys will bear with us as we figure out how to record these videos, what exactly we want to record, how to present ourselves, all the ins and outs of uh, producing a YouTube channel. But uh, to kick it off, I figured we'd start talking about what we ride now and maybe a little bit about why we ride it. So uh, this is a 2014 Triumph Rocket Touring Edition. Uh, Triumph made a couple of different uh, rockets throughout the years. There was a, a Roadster and a Classic, and they all come with the 2300cc uh, uh, three-cylinder engine. Up until about 2020, it was the largest displacement uh, production engine uh, ever made for motorcycles. The uh, 2020 uh, Triumph came out with a uh, 2500 cc uh, rocket. They updated the model, and actually they updated the naming. Also, the uh, old, older than 2020, everything is Rocket 3 with uh, Roman numerals, and after that, it's a uh, Rocket 3 alphanumeric. Triumph only produces two models now, uh, but before that, they had. Uh, um, a, a few different models. They experimented with the platform just a little bit. The Touring Edition here has uh, a actually tuned down engine. It, it makes a little more torque at lower RPM is uh, um, what they've done to it. And this bike in particular has some D&D &D pipes, some after, aftermarket slip-ons and a um, k and filter. And a k and filter and the tune that goes along with it. So uh, this bike is, is mostly stock. That, that change isn't, isn't a whole lot of power difference compared to a uh, um, stock bike. So. Also, the Touring Edition has saddlebags and it has a larger back seat, a pillion seat, and a backrest. And it also has uh, floorboards instead of pegs. So it's a little bit more of a comfortable ride if you have somebody that you're riding two up with. We bought this bike in Colorado and uh, just north of Denver and we rode it back home. 
a little over yeah. 900 miles. Yeah. To Arizona. And it was, it was a, a long ride, and I didn't find it uncomfortable, but the the back seat for that long of a ride on a brand new bike was a little rough on Emma. And so we actually have um, a Russell Daylong seat that we're going to, uh, we have on order now, and we're gonna get installed on this bike, or install ourselves on this bike. That, and that's something else that uh, we wanna do is walk you guys through everything that we do on the bike and all the changes that we make and uh, how to do those things. There's not a, a ton of video online of processes on this bike. Uh, there is a excellent uh, forum, r3owners.net, and uh, it is a excellent resource for all sorts of uh, information regarding these bikes, not just the Touring Edition, but the, uh, the Classic and Roadster versions, as well as the 2020 versions as well. But um, there's just not a whole lot of uh, video uh, around these bikes, so we thought it would be interesting to, to add that to, uh, to what we do on this channel. Uh, back to where I was headed. We're, we're putting a uh, Russell Daylong uh, touring seat on this, something that'll be a little more comfortable for longer rides, uh, especially at the billion position. And uh, I actually made a backrest uh, that we're having covered with vinyl right now uh, to replace the stock one, something a little, a little larger. And part of the reason for all that is because we came from before this bike, the bike we had was a a Honda GL1500, a Goldwing. And it was incredibly easy to ride long distances on. This one's not bad, but it, it's got some stiff competition, especially with what we just came off of. So. We're just doing what we can to make it more comfortable in that regard. Yeah, and it's not that the Triumph, that this rocket is necessarily uncomfortable. It, it works, but um, coming from the gold thing, um, it's, it's like sitting on a, on a couch. I mean, the, the seat, if you've ever sat on or seen a gold wing, the back seat, you know, is very wide and the back rest comes up very high. of a curvy girl so having the narrowness of the rockets back seat um, makes it harder for me to sit square so on the ride back we rode 13 hours one day and like two or three hours the next day and since I couldn't quite find where to sit square on the back seat it meant that my um, hip alignment was out which messed my knee up and so like after about an hour's worth of riding my knee would start to ache and I just have to tell Zach you know we got to pull over so I can walk it out a little bit you know shake my hips out move my knee around and and um so we would be able to ride for about an hour hour and a half um sometimes even only about 45 minutes before I would have to get off so and also the backrest on this one hits me at about um, the bottom of my rib cage and the gold wings backrest hit me at just about, you know, the bottom of my shoulder blades. So the back seat that we're having covered up at Guy's Upholstery here locally is going to um, come up about that same distance, about closer to my shoulder blades and um, just give me a little more protection feel. Cause on the rocket, I mean, you don't have, you have bags and stuff, but uh, it's not like on the Goldwing where everything felt encompassing. You know, you had the backrest and you had places to put your elbows and stuff and you weren't just like flapping out in the breeze like you are on the rocket. So yeah, it's, it's still a pretty comfortable bike, but um, we're hoping to make some improvements to make it more comfortable. I wasn't one of those kids that uh, grew up on a dirt bike and uh, just transferred that into riding motorcycles when I was older. I did have a little Honda Trail 50 that we took out occasionally, so I had a tiny amount of experience, but uh, not nothing really to write home about. And uh, when I got my first motorcycle, which was a little Kawasaki 250, I outgrew it in about two weeks. <laughs> uh, it didn't take me long to want something bigger. And 
ever since then, uh, every bike that I've had has had um, over a thousand cc's of displacement, uh, usually by a fair amount. So, I, again, it's not been a lot of bikes, but I, I tend towards larger vehicles um, and not necessarily for speed. I, I wouldn't even call myself a speed demon. I'm not somebody who who needs to tear it up and go crazy fast. I, I do like punching the throttle and getting on it once in a while, but uh, it's never really been a huge driving factor. I'd probably be really happy with something that uh, only had, you know, 750 cc displacement, something that would move without giving me too much issue. But I don't know, there's something about uh, about twisting the throttle and having it just hammer you in the back like 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 this bike does that uh, is quite entertaining so I have wanted one of these bikes a rocket since about the time I started riding and uh, it wasn't until we f sort of figured out the style of riding that we like to do the touring uh, styling uh, that uh, I was settled on the uh, touring edition of the rocket but I'm glad that they made one because uh, boy I really like this bike <laughs> I do prefer the sound of a v-twin uh, I wasn't I wasn't so sure about this triple when uh, when we first got it but the sound has grown on me it uh, it sounds all right <laughs> especially with these uh, D and D pipes the the stock touring was a pretty quiet motorcycle the uh, D and D wakes that up quite a bit so so we flew to Colorado to meet with a gentleman who owned this bike. He was the only owner and took really good care of it. And then we hung out with some friends and rode it home very early in the morning. <laughs> Beautiful weather the whole way back though. We encountered just a tiny bit of rain that we managed to skirt around. So it, uh, it really wasn't bad at all. Yeah, we didn't run into too many troubles or or anything really. We had some fun just outside of uh, New Mexico at a gas station with some dogs. All right, we're grabbing some lunch at the getting spot. Um, with this is Republica Infinita, a, uh, a local Arizona place. Great food. Uh, we'll get back after the honey here in a little bit. I will say, if you've never had an empanada, you're missing out. <laughs> they are like a Mexican hand pie, and uh, nobody does them better than Republica and Pinata, so. That was a treat, and they did not last very long. On to the honey. The actual goal of this entire endeavor. Before we were so rudely interrupted by lunch, uh, we were talking about the gas station with wild dogs that uh, interrupted our trip back from Colorado on the rocket. So we came to the gas station at night and these three dogs, I don't know if they were owned by somebody or if they were wild, but there was somebody making kissy faces at them, trying, I guess, to get them to come to them, but... It was a rough parking lot. Yeah, a rough parking lot. And then there was this kind of drainage ditch thing that didn't have a grate over it, and Zach was headed straight for it, like head on. So he had to figure out how to navigate a turn so that he could come at it perpendicularly perpendicular so he could go over it and these three dogs were running up on us and they were just a hot mess I was yelling at the dogs and Zach's trying to navigate this 800 pound bike and over a rough terrain in a parking lot and so we just cruised on in and cruised right on out <laughs> to another gas station down the road it certainly was not worth hanging out at, I'll say that. And other than that, and some road construction that we ran into, and some terrible freeways, roads, conditions, and uh, Thornton, um, it was 
an easy trip for the most part. Yeah, Thornton, get your act together. Your roads were absolute crap. <laughs> Luckily, the uh, suspension on this rocket was able to handle it. it. But man, I can't imagine something with some rough suspension trying to navigate those roads. They were perhaps some of the worst I've ever driven over, car or bike. And Zach has a lot of confidence in his abilities to do just about anything. Uh, so getting on a new motorcycle and riding all the way across a couple of states is nothing to him. It took, took me a little more mental fortitude, I guess, to, to be willing to, to jump on and go. I don't lack for belief in myself. This is true. <laughs> so there was definitely a couple of times for myself where I was like, okay, I need to get off, or you need to slow down, or <laughs> you need to tell me what's going on, or just a couple of things. And, and I was dealing with a new helmet, and uh, that was a, a little bit of a struggle on its own, and that'll be a story for another day. But we made it home. And all in all, it was a great ride. Mm -hmm. Something that will take a little bit of getting used to on the uh, the rocket as compared to the Goldwing is the amount of storage space we had. That, uh, that Goldwing with... Goldwing had pockets everywhere. Two saddlebags and a trunk and none of them were small. Uh, you could haul a lot of stuff in them. It, uh, it was certainly the minivan of motorcycles. <laughs> And uh, I guess just uh, continuing the comparison between the two, they uh, they both weigh about the same, uh, a little a little over 800 pounds, which is, if you're unfamiliar with motorcycles, incredibly heavy. But the the only real difference in handling between the two, or the way that they feel between the two motorcycles, that that I can tell, is that. Once you're underway, the rocket feels much more planted than the uh, Goldwing ever did. The Goldwing, I mean, it was the the weight was higher, right? Like the the center of gravity was taller. It, it wasn't as low slung of a motorcycle, so it, it just didn't have that that laid back. -ness. Yeah, that that I don't know that very planted feeling that you get on this bike, but the the Goldwing had the advantage of because it's uh, it was a taller bike. It had a little more uh, leverage when you were picking it up off the kickstand or something. It, it wasn't. It didn't feel quite as heavy as uh, its actual weight was. Just to, you know, when you're first standing it up. This bike lets you know that it weighs a lot. that is uh, Michelangelo. It's a, a green Nissan Frontier with a orange bed liner. And we got Opal, the Goldwing, from my adopted dad. He passed away a couple years ago. Um, I ended up inheriting the Goldwing. And uh, when my dad had passed away, the, the Goldwing Opal had been sitting for a couple of years because he'd been sick for a little while, so she hadn't been ridden in a while. And um, we were told a sob story that, you know, Honda motorcycles aren't aren't worth anything and you can't find parts and you can't fix them, so... This I is by just, the mechanic that had it. Yeah, so I should just give it to that said mechanic and let him have it. And I 
said, no, I want my motorcycle. So we got it from him and put some uh, sea foam. Is that what it's called? Yep, put a little sea foam in the tank and uh, she turned over. Yep, right away. So we did some work on her and uh, together Zach and I like working on motorcycles together. So you'll see some other videos and stuff of us working on the rocket and things like that together. But uh, we replaced the carburetors and the hoses and filters and tubes and all that stuff and the back tire and a couple other things to get her up and running. She worked great. <laughs> I don't know what that mechanic was talking about. Once we rode Opal around for a, a couple of years and had her, then made some memories of our own with her, then we um, passed her along to somebody else and now we have Maverick. Some local crockets honey. I'll see you. See you when we get it. Honey acquired. <laughs> Let's uh, take it off. As we're getting close to wrapping this one up, I think Emma and I would like to say that we're excited to add our voice to the moto vlogging community and and uh, bring our perspective as a a couple that rides two up and and how that uh, affects how you ride and the perspective that we have on, on riding and, and where we're coming from and with our, our history with it. So I think, I think we're excited to get into this and uh, share, share our adventures with you. And if you have questions, you can feel free to ask us answer them to the best of our ability. Quest complete. Thanks for a beautiful ride.